Now, I've had many different exhaust setups on my C5 Corvette, but this one, this one is a world's first. See, the later gen Corvettes like some of the C6, C7, and well, not that new anymore, C8 Corvettes, all have one thing about them that I really wish the older vets had, and it's a dual mode or a variable exhaust. But today, we're giving the C5 Corvette its own sort of variable dual mode exhaust. On this car, I've had a Borla S-Type, an SLP loudmouth, which is essentially a muffler delete, then I put on speed engineering long tube headers. Let's take a look at these bad Larrys. It's uh and a catless X-pipe. Three inch X-pipe. Three inches, just as big as his wiener. <laughs> <laughs> that's bigger. Yeah, that's close, but. It was loud. Really, really loud. <laughs> it sounds so good. And that's the way I've been running the car for the past year and a half. And that's also why I have the hearing of a 186 year old man. No, literally. That's no joke. I say what a lot during conversations. Now, some of you are going to say, just do cutouts. Just do cutouts. Cutouts are cool. I have them on my old Z28. There's one thing I hate about cutouts. It dumps the exhaust wherever the cutout is. So on my Z28, that was right down next to the door. I like having all the noise coming out of the back of the car where the tailpipe is, not like under me. And that's why these Valtronic Designs mufflers are so special. So here's how this is gonna pan out. From Valtronic, we have these two, two and a half inch valve mufflers. They are universal, but I can't weld or fabricate very well or do anything very well for that matter but we have to get these to work in the car in the first place. That's why now we're gonna flash back to a younger and a dare I say more wise Jake in the cold of winter where he's gonna show us how we're gonna make this setup work. Then tomorrow in real time, we'll be bringing the vet to Northeast Auto Imports who has been gracious enough to lend us a lift to meet with fabrication extraordinaire Rick Taylor to transform this Corvette. I am excited about you guys. Hmm? There's a new life ahead for you. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a good, good life. So here's how this whole thing is gonna pan out. The mufflers are controlled by a vacuum box. They're vacuum actuated. You need power to that vacuum box. So they give you a cigarette lighter uh, power adapter. You then run that to the vacuum box. The vacuum box then has one, uh, it has one vacuum line that has to go from the interior of the car, obviously, to the exterior. You then, don't laugh, Jake, don't laugh. You then take the T-split and put the uh, the hoses to each nipple. You put the lines to the nipples. <laughs> <clears throat> you put the vacuum lines to the nipples that are on the mufflers. I am 25 years old, this is, this is bad. Those lines go to the mufflers and uh, and that's basically it. So right now, I'm gonna show you how I did that. Later this week, we then have to bring the vet to an exhaust shop uh, to have them fabricate um, basically an axle back. So I'm gonna keep the long tube headers. Now, just a little side note. This was before I mocked the mufflers up and realized just how much custom fabrication it was going to take to get these mufflers to fit. Hence why I've had these mufflers for so long and took so long to put them on. So we go underneath here, you can see the SLP goes, I don't know if you can see it, yep, goes up over the axle right there. But we have to put mufflers somewhere in here. Now this is where the mufflers normally go, there's the heat shield. So maybe there'll be enough room for them up there. Again, that's not my expertise. Uh, that's where I actually have to hire a professional. The next part of this whole thing is uh, I got different tips. I got different exhaust tips right over here, I'll show you. 
So these are the ones that I went with. Very, very pretty. So what these are, are a two and a half inch inlet, because as I said, the mufflers are two and a half. All my piping after the three inch Catalyst X pipe uh, will be two and a half. I don't need three going all the way out the back. I'm not making that much horsepower at all. But what I've always wanted with this Corvette was bigger. Oh God. Because one thing I've always wanted when I got the VET was just bigger exhaust tips. When I had the Borla S type, it had the just two tips, which I wasn't a huge fan of. I think those were like three and a half inch exhaust tips. The exhaust has been gone for two years, so no way of knowing now. I could look it up actually. And then this SLP system, you can see down here, it has, uh, it has these ovals, which, you know, really isn't bad. I promise you that wasn't a fart. That was just, uh, that was my boot. It uh, squeaks because it is broken in half. Yeah. Sponsor me Timberland, please. It has these oval exhaust tips, which frankly doesn't look bad with the oval tail lights. I just like, like, especially on my brothers, he's got uh, just four big, four inch exhaust pipes. Just looks really aggressive. And uh, I think that's what the back end of mine is lacking. So these exhaust tips, uh, they came from Jegs actually. Jegs makes these. They're very, very fairly priced. If you've ever seen the price of Corsa tips, good God, they were huge money. Granted, they're really good quality, uh, but I could buy four of these for the price of like one of theirs. Two and a half inch inlet. Uh, to twin four inch tips. Of course, I got another one. So I'll have four of these giant four inch tips out of the back. I think it's gonna look really good. You can see a nice little comparison here. I think it's gonna look much, much better. And these are, um, I think these are stainless steel, the finish I got. They look really, really good. They're very, very affordable. These ones, I don't remember what color they're supposed to be. So are you guys following along thus far? Good, I'll include a link for both uh, these exhaust tips from Jegs and the Valtronic Design Mufflers uh, down in the description below for you guys to check out. I have a feeling lots of you guys are gonna want this setup once you see what it can do. It really is wild and I haven't even heard it yet. Now, earlier that day, I figured out how I would hide the power cord for the control box and figured out how I would get a line from inside the vet to the outside, which took some creativity and a little help from our friends on the internet. So I'm gonna show you guys what I did so far to run all of this plumbing. There really isn't that much. The thing with the vet is it's kind of a weird setup because on the hatchback model like I have, you have all of this room and you have these compartments. So here's how I think I'm gonna do it. Now again, we have a little vacuum control box right here. Very, very sharp looking. I had to empty out that little cubby. We're gonna have the vacuum control box right down here. I don't know how I'm gonna mount it yet. There's not a ton of room to slide around, but I just don't, don't want it sliding around. So I'm gonna figure out some way to mount this in here. I was thinking of maybe Velcroing the back of the box and putting a piece of Velcro down there just to, to give it something because I don't really wanna make a bracket and drill into here. The whole point is I don't wanna have to drill in general. Which brings us to our next point. How do we get the vacuum line, which is not here, but it's right here. How do we get the vacuum line? So they give you a nice long piece. We have to get this from the vacuum control box to the exterior of the car down here. Now, there are a few ways that you can go about doing that. And the guys that have installed backup cameras in their C5s know that. Now, I haven't installed a backup camera on my C5. I'm not going to. And I know if you're trying to get wires through the firewall, um, there are already grommets to do that. But as far as the rear, where the mufflers are gonna be that we have to plug into, um, from the, from the factory, there are only a few options. Now from the research I've done, you can either go through the e-brake handle, like that area. Um, there's a grommet that goes through, but in this case, I thought it was a little odd because you'd have to run vacuum lines back up to the front and then down and then back a little ways. One, I'm not sure if the lines they give you are long enough for that. Another way that you can do it is you can drill right through anywhere. Uh, the car is fiberglass, you can just drill a hole, run the vacuum line through, a little silicone or you use a rubber grommet or something. You could do it that way too. Wouldn't have to be a big hole, obviously, because the line is, I've never been good with measuring uh, off eyesight. Ask my ex, but uh, it's not very big, not very big at all. So you could easily just drill a little hole anywhere through the body. I did not want to do that. So on a, on a coupe or a hatchback, 
uh, you don't have a ton of options what you can do if you don't want to drill anyways. So what I found was if you take out, if you take out, now I've already unbolted this obviously, but if you take out the driver's side outermost tail light and you feel around here, obviously you guys are not going to feel this, but right up around this corner, right where my shadow is, there's a vent. And if you go to the inside of the trunk and you remove, uh, that's not the piece, and you remove the trim piece that goes right in there like that, pull that out, this is what you're left with. But in here, there's the vent you felt. And if you look, oh yeah, it goes to the outside. I don't exactly know what this thing is, but these are just little flaps and you can, you can run something to the outside there. I don't know if there's any negative consequences of having this left open a little bit if we run the cable down through there, but we'll find out. But then we'll just run the, uh, the line down here, hide it up out of the way and run it to the mufflers. Now, as far as running power to the, uh, the sacred little vacuum control box, as I said, you get a, uh, it's, it's powered by a cigarette lighter. They give you a cable, you plug it right into the cigarette lighter, easy peasy. Now the C5 has two cigarette lighters, both at the front of the car. So what I thought the best thing to do was make sure your doors don't hit anything. There we go. Let me get that out of there. Was just imagine the center consoles right here. Your other cigarette lighter is right here. That's where it goes. So I figured why not plug it in there, hide it out of the back of the console and then run it under this carpet all the back there. So when I took this cover off, I took this cover off, I realized the, the carpet just just kind of floats here. And once I removed the little stop that holds the uh, the glass target roof in the back when you take it off, you can lift the carpet right up out of the way and you can see I just slid my cable right up to the front. And then we go up to the front here, slide the seat forward. You can see this is where GM runs some wires themselves. So I just took this piece of carpet that normally lays like that no bolts or anything, folded it up like this, reached down there and grabbed the cable we ran. See, here it is. So now with that up like that, let me put this down. We've got the cable hidden completely all the way to the front here where we have power. So the only thing I need to make sure of now, the only reason this wouldn't work is if the console lid won't shut uh, with that cable sticking out of the side of it. It should, it's a smaller cable. That's gonna be our only problem. I think it's gonna work. Unfortunately, we won't know until the exhaust is welded in and I'm reinstalling everything. But if that's the case, we'll just, we'll work around it. We'll figure it out. We're resilient. So that's pretty much as far as we can go for now until we go to the exhaust shop, get the mufflers welded in, have the, the cat back, basically have the cat back fabricated. I will see you guys in two days when we finally take the vet to the shop. I am so freaking excited, man. But it wasn't quite that easy. And as I would learn, it also wasn't just a matter of welding the mufflers in. And then for six months, we waited. I sent multiple emails out to local shops and even brought the vet to a few, but no one thought they could make the Valvetronic mufflers fit until I found Rick Taylor, who came to check out the car and said he could do it. So finally, at the end of May, we loaded the mufflers and tips into the vet, listened to its straight pipe glory one more time, and then headed to Northeast Auto Imports where the build would take place.
Yeah. But most likely, I'm going to have to go like this. Okay. Which is going to suck, but yeah. because of the tip and how, they, how far out they sit. Yeah. So the mufflers are in place on the vet. Rick did a fantastic job. He is incredibly, incredibly skilled. Uh, it looks so cool. I'll show you guys more after, and obviously you'll hear sound clips when we're all done. But the problem is the exhaust is not done because Jegs, the little lads at Jegs, uh, sent me an exhaust tip that I wasn't aware of, but uh, Rick found out when he had it at eye level and was going to, uh, going to install it. One of the exhaust tips was crooked. I'll put a picture up of it here. Not a huge deal, but he's putting so much time and effort into fabricating the rest of the system uh, that that's literally the part you're gonna see the most. And for it to be crooked, and it's not even his fault, for that to be crooked would just, it would suck. It would suck, so. So I've contacted Jegs, they were great. They sent a new one out right away. I have it now, and we're meeting up with Rick to finish the install tomorrow. So what we're gonna do now is actually plug everything in, get everything set up so that when Rick finishes fabricating the rest of the exhaust, the tailpipes with the tips, it will be done. It'll be ready to go. So what we need to do now is you guys saw at the beginning, you saw me run the wires for the control box. We ran the cable to the back, nice and hidden. And then we ran the vacuum lines out of the side of the car. What we're gonna do now is actually plumb those vacuum lines to the mufflers, keep them all neat, nice and hidden and so that they're not flopping around. And then we'll finish setting up the control box make sure that the valves work. Then tomorrow we'll go meet up with Rick. I don't think we're going to Northeast again because we don't need uh, we don't need a full shop. And then after tomorrow, you guys can finally hear what this thing sounds like. It is, I'm so excited. First, we installed the small antenna onto the control box and plugged in the power cord. Then unraveled the vacuum line and ran it down through the vent on the side of the car. I knew it had to be up there somewhere. And after some searching, I found the line and pulled it through. Next, we took out both outermost taillights and used my lanky arms to find the line and guide it to the other side of the car. For those shorter armed folks, first of all, suck it. And secondly, you're better off taking out all the taillights at the beginning. I ended up having to do it anyways at the end to neaten up my plumbing. I ran the vacuum line to the furthest muffler away, plugged it into the <clears throat> nipple on the muffler, making sure to keep it as far away from the hot mufflers as possible. As I mentioned, I ended up having to pull both the other taillights in order to zip tie the vacuum line nice and tight to the wiring harness so it wasn't just flopping around back there or rubbing against anything that could wear a hole through it and cause a leak. Then I discovered something quite interesting. So I had to stop for a second because I was in here behind the taillights. I found this cool, uh, I don't know exactly what it is, if it's some sort of build sheet or something, but got the ship date on there too bad I can't read any of it but it's kind of cool I don't know what this is it's just funny because I just like two months ago put out the video the secrets of the c5 Corvette and uh I guess this is a secret that I didn't know if this is a factory thing which I have to assume it is it's interesting let me know if you guys know what this is now back to work I was super cautious and careful when routing and zip tying the vacuum line because I did not want anything to happen to it back there I didn't want it rubbing on anything that could chafe through it. But with the line secured to the passenger side muffler, it was time to make our cut and add the split in so we could run a vacuum line down to the other muffler on the driver's side, which wasn't as easy as I thought. A little KY jelly or your favorite lubricant of choice would sure come in handy here, but I'm a man, so I used pure brute force to make it fit. Next, we plugged in our other line to the other muffler, then checked to see if the vacuum box was working and reinstalled all the taillights. With the control box set up, vacuum lines plumbed to each of the mufflers, and a new, not crooked exhaust tip in hand, we brought the vet back to Rick so we could build the rest of the system, a process that took him another many, many more hours of work late into the night. And then, the following morning, I picked up the vet to bring it home. And just look and listen to these results. <laughs>
guys well that is going to be a wrap i am stoked with the way that this exhaust turned out and i have to give a massive shout out to both rick taylor for doing all of the custom fabrication you guys can check him out i'll include a link to his facebook and instagram down in the description below as you can see here he does some incredible incredible work and another massive shout out to valve tronic for hooking me up with these universal valved mufflers the way that everything came out i am just i am stoked the way it sounds the way it looks especially with the, the tips everything oh it's 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 gorgeous it's like a work of art under there now now as far as the sound like the interior sound and all that um i'll be doing another follow-up video more more of a review on the sound of the exhaust how it sounds on the inside all that different angles uh, I'll be doing a review, a full review on the exhaust in the coming weeks, so be sure to stay tuned for that. But uh, I am just thrilled with the way that this thing looks now, the way it sounds. Having that adjustability is just, it's the best thing. I love it. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy motoring.